Welcome to One Passage. You are listening to a study of Paul's letter to the Galatians called Set Free by Christ Alone. In this episode, we're looking at chapter 5, verses 2 to 15. In this passage, Paul is beginning to move from defending the gospel message to showing how to live in light of it by once again encouraging the Galatians and us today that true freedom can only come through believing in the true gospel, which is that our salvation is by grace alone through faith in Christ alone. So we have titled this episode, How Can We Live Free in Christ? For this passage, we have two key reading tools that will help us rightly read and understand the passage. First, one of the key things that Paul does in this passage is to show that there are really only two options when it comes to our relationship with God. Paul does this in each paragraph, so try and identify the two options that he gives and see how he compares them both. Second, whenever we're reading and trying to understand a passage in the Bible, it's important to remember where we are at in each particular book. So in this passage, Paul is shifting between sections 2 and 3 of his letter to the Galatians, so see if you can identify how his writing is shifting and why that's important. So we encourage you to get your Bibles out and put your eyes on God's Word as we hear it read out for us now. Look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. You are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take no other view, and the one who is troubling you will bear the penalty, whoever he is. But if I, brothers, still preach circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would emasculate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. In this passage, Paul teaches us how to live free in Christ. And to live freely, we must reject some things and embrace others. We reject false teaching. We reject false teachers. And we don't believe the lies of our sinful nature that tell us that if we aren't under the Mosaic Law, then we can live however we want. Instead, we accept the true message of the gospel as preached by the apostles, and we use the freedom that God has given to us for the benefit of others. This life of service and love is what God has always been driving his people toward. There are two big ideas that Paul is trying to get across in this passage so that we can understand how to live free in Christ. In verses 2 to 12, Paul tells us, don't accept anything except the gospel. And he shows us that by telling us in verses 2 to 6 to reject false teaching, and then in verses 7 to 12, to reject false teachers. And then in verses 13 to 15, Paul tells us, use gospel freedom to love others. In verses 2 to 6, Paul tells us that rejecting false teaching is a key to living free in Christ. In Galatia, the battle for freedom centered on whether or not the congregation would accept circumcision. And Paul was completely against that because the false teachers were telling these people to get circumcised because it was necessary for salvation. And Paul calls them to reject this because faith in Christ is all or nothing. The gospel message is not something that you can accept in addition to a system of works or any other way of life. Christ demands our entire allegiance. You can't have Christ plus something else. So each church member had a choice. Do I trust in Christ alone or do I separate myself from him by entering into a system of works to earn God's favor? And Paul closes by giving us a picture of what this faith looks like. What we do is we look forward in a sure hope to a day when God will declare us right in his sight and welcome us into fellowship with him forever, all because of what Jesus did for us. And in the meantime, this living faith will evidence itself in love of God and of neighbor. In verses 7 to 12, Paul says that if we aren't going to accept anything except the gospel, then we must reject false teachers who teach a different gospel. Paul once again is addressing the Galatians specifically in verse 7 by asking them, who hindered them from obeying the truth. The way false gospels come into the church and our lives as Christians is through false teachers who hinder our freedom in Christ. Paul says that this message of adding to grace, even just a little bit, 
is not from God and distorts the entire gospel. If we embrace it, then it will hinder us from living free in Christ. It will trouble us in our souls. We will feel unsettled in our relationship with God, and the humbling message of the cross will be undermined in our hearts and minds. False teachers and those who embrace their message will one day face God's judgment, and we need to be prepared, like Paul, to face persecution from them when we reject their message. It is only by believing the real gospel that only Christ can set us free from sin, that we can know that we are right with God, and so we reject anyone who teaches that we can add anything to what Christ has fully accomplished on our behalf. In verses 13 to 15, Paul guards us against a potential misunderstanding of what he's been saying. So throughout the entire letter, he's been showing us that Christians are no longer under the law. But of course, the next question that some people would ask after hearing that would be, hey, does that mean that I could live however I want? And the answer to that is a very clear no. We have a sinful nature inside of us that Paul calls the flesh. And God has called those who are fully accepted by him to fight it. And we do that first by devoting our life to others. So instead of using the law as a means to earn God's favor, we now use the law to see what God cares about. And when we do that, we see that God has been calling us to serve one another through love. That's why Paul can say that the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So we see that we shouldn't use our freedom to indulge desires that will destroy us. Instead, we use it to benefit others. Paul has made one final appeal to us here about the truth and essence of the gospel, that if we want to be truly free, to have the burden of our sin and guilt lifted from us, and to have peace that we are right with God, then we have to believe the true message of the gospel, that we are saved by grace alone through faith in Christ alone, and nothing can ever, ever be added to grace. And once we know that we are free, we can then begin to live Christ-like lives in which we make our life more about others than ourselves, and by God's grace and strength, by His Spirit, begin to fulfill the law of love. In light of this passage, thank God for freeing you from a bondage to sin and death that you could have never freed yourself from on your own. And thank Him that you get to live every single day in a sure hope that you will stand before Him and He will declare you right in His sight because of Jesus Christ. And also pray that God would show you areas in your life where you're using your freedom in Christ as an opportunity to sin instead of devoting yourself to the service of others out of love. And then repent of this sin, knowing that Christ has already paid for it. Thank you.